This one's called This Woman on the Train. This happened last week, and while she didn't seem malicious, the thing she said was creepy. I, 19 male, was going home from university to get home. As I got on, a lot of the seats were occupied. In my country, the seats are put in a way, uh, in a way so that four people can sit and uh, can talk and sit in front of each other. Oh, so they're like seats that are facing each other. And these are kind of close. Perfect for talking with strangers, sadly. I see that there is a free space in front of this girl uh, who was one or two years younger than me. But you can never know. I go there and I ask her if I, sit, uh, if I can sit down. Of course, uh, she replied. And she looked at me in a strange, intense way. I pull out my phone to distract myself from her. She also had a chocolate in her hand. That's going to be important for later. She asked me, where do you live? And I was like, why, why do you have to know? So she asked when I'm going to get off the train. I told her the place and she told me that she was getting off the next one. She started singing and then said, oh, sometimes I sing. I'm a silly girl. Then did it again. Whenever she said something, she looked at me like she was waiting for a response. So I replied, it's okay to be silly because I didn't want to talk to her. Then she told me, you're pretty. And when I asked what, uh, she, she asked if she's pretty. In my language, the second one is an extension of the first. Say pvaj. And then it turned into right after that. Szép vagyok. There you go. So it seemed like she corrected herself. Uh, then she asked if she had chocolate on her face. She did. I also got the chocolate offered to me, but I declined. So she told me about her piercing that came off and she put it in the middle of the train. I told her that she should get a fix where she got it. And she said, in Germany, will you go there with me? But obviously, I told her no. While she tried to put on her piercing back in, it was a mouth uh, piercing, uh, she told me that she's in love with me. I told her that I have a girlfriend. I don't, but the university I tend to pr has much prettier girls in her. Okay, you don't have to fucking put that. All right. Um, and that the pacing is too fast for me. And she told me that she will beat my girlfriend. Her I love you started escalating into I'll kidnap you and strip for me. She asked me if I'll go with her and if she could go home with me. Then when the train arrived at my destination, she asked me, where are you, are, are you going, love? I told her, yes, I went on my way. Luckily, she didn't follow me home. She also asked me when we are going to meet again. Hopefully, never. Uh, this is... My screaming may have saved my life. Some context first. This story takes place in 2020 when I was 18 years old. I lived in a relatively safe neighborhood, but my country does have a high crime rate in general. So take that with a pinch of salt. My dad had passed away earlier in the year and I had no siblings. So my mom and I lived alone in our house. The COVID lockdowns were still in place, but as certain restrictions were lifted, people were starting to return to work. Between my house and the train tracks was a stretch of empty field. It became a safe, quiet space for me to escape to whenever I needed to get out of the house. I would normally sit there uh, once a day for a cigarette or two, sometimes for a little picnic. My home situation was complicated to say the least, and due to the pandemic, I had nowhere else to go. On this particular day, I went there for a few minutes to smoke as always. I was about halfway through my cigarette when I noticed a young man walking along the train tracks. On the other side of the field, he was barefoot and wearing dirty, worn out clothes. He noticed me and made a hand gesture su uh, suggesting that he was asking for a smoke. 
I should have just left, but as a teenager, I found it difficult to say no to people. I walked across the field and handed him a smoke. He took it from me and I immediately felt uneasy with the way he was looking at me. He asked me, don't you live in that house over there? And pointed at my house. I avoided answering the question and at this point I realized that I needed to leave. I had left from my front gate that day. For him to know where I lived, he must have watched me leave from the back gate before. I told him I needed to get going. He started insisting on giving me a hug to say thank you. I declined several times. At this point, I turned around and started walking away quickly. I didn't get very far. He caught up to me and put his arms around my waist. I panicked. Not knowing what to do, all I could think of was that I needed to get away. As I tried to start running, he grabbed me from behind and started dragging me toward the row of houses where the view from the road is completely blocked. The fences were high too, so no one could see the field from their backyards. We were completely isolated. I was kicking and struggling, desperate to get out of his grasp. He ended up throwing me on the ground with him on top of me, still holding on. In a split second, my life flashed before my eyes. That feeling that someone, uh, something terrible was about to happen overcame me. I couldn't escape. He was too strong. My arms were trapped by his and he was holding me down. So I couldn't kick him. I did the only thing left to do and I started screaming for help. Suddenly, I was free. I could move. He had let go and jumped off of me. He ran away. My heart was still pounding. I was shaking and shocked from what had just happened. He disappeared into the industrial area on the other side of the train tracks. I immediately ran towards the road. As I reached it, I noticed it was empty. There was no cars parked in my neighbor's driveway. No one heard me screaming. And had he realized that they could have had a far worse ending. He knew where I lived and I was terrified of him returning. For months I had panic attacks and nightmares and I could barely leave my house without breaking down. I moved away from there a year later but I still sometimes get scared when I'm home alone or walking around town. Thankfully I never saw him again and I hope I never will. Almost kidnapped in a ghost town. Ready? Ready. I never tell anyone this story, but reading all the stories on here, I feel like I need to post about it. Because of this, I don't go on walks alone or even with friends unless it's in a very public place. But even then, I'm paranoid. With that being said, my friend's family had just moved into a new town 15 minutes away from where I lived. It was a complete ghost town, with one tiny grocery store, a post office, and a school. This town was so secluded and quiet, I rarely ever saw cars drive by. One night, as we were unpacking boxes, we heard a knock on the door. It was a big tall man with a shotgun in his hand. Being from Oklahoma, this could mean e you're either meeting your hick new neighbor or it's actually someone wanting to harm us. Turns out it was just a hick neighbor coming to introduce himself. He told my friend's mom about the lack of police and how everyone tends to carry their own guns in order to protect themselves because the police were usually no help and no help and 15 minutes away. He also talked about how these areas can be dangerous and that my friend's mom should keep a gun with her. At this time, I was 13 years old, and knowing this information, you would think that I would simply st stay my ass inside and not wander the streets of this dangerous hillbilly ghost town. But I did. There was no service, no cable, and nothing to do but to go outside. We would walk to the store and get snacks, walk to the school and play on the playground, the majority of the time, we wouldn't see a single car or person, but the same clerk in the grocery store on every walk we took out. There was a day my dad had brought me to her house, and right off the bat, we walked to the park. That day, I was sick to my stomach, 
but I was eager to see my friend, so I went anyways. I had a terrible feeling, and now that I'm older and have experienced bad anxiety, I can now say that that day I was experiencing some pretty bad anxiety, and I didn't know why I felt this way. When we got there, we actually ended up hanging out with an old friend who had transferred to this school a year prior. After he left, we sat on a bench for what felt like ages, taking selfies and talking, when all of a sudden, the stereotypical creepy van pulls up to the park. Now, my friend was and still is way braver than I was and will ever be, and she was always the daredevil one in our friendship. But for some reason, around this time, I just assumed it was a family coming to play, and my anxiety was gone. But my friend was scared. She immediately had a bad feeling when the van pulled up, and I could tell she was ready to leave. But we decided to stay and see who it was before just running off. Of course, like something out of a movie, came out two big men literally barreling over to where we were. We immediately started to walk away, and they tried to follow us and grab us. At this point, we began to run. They got back into the van and followed us. I had no idea how, but they didn't catch up to us. But we ran as fast as we would up the road and straight to the grocery store. I was so horrified when we got inside, I couldn't even speak. That sick feeling I felt on the way to my friend's house made complete sense now. My mom was always watching true crime growing up, and sometimes she would have me watch with her. So I was always really scared to walk around because of that. But even with that fear, I never thought it would ever happen to me. The van was parked across the street, but eventually drove off. We walked home with no way to call anyone, thinking they could be waiting around for us every corner with absolutely no one around. It was the scariest day of my life. I didn't tell anyone for years, which was stupid of me, but at 13 years old, I didn't know what to do. I'm turning 21 soon, and this story still keeps me up at night. I can't imagine what would have happened if they captured me and my friend, where we would have gone missing, and what would have happened to us. Then we have another story, uh, the cartoon character Stalker. I wonder what this could entail. Either it means a stalker with an anime profile picture, or uh, it's somebody in a mascot costume or something. Who knows? We're about to find out. My parents had purchased a condo about 10 minutes from their home around the time my older brother was born, with the intent that my siblings and I have the options of renting it when we come of age. I moved in alongside my brother a few weeks after my 18th birthday, Exhilarated by the freedom of our childhood home, which had become laden with traumatic memories over the years. The move took two or three days, and we had a U-Haul come in and out the driveway during that time. My first day of college occurred a few days later. I had a full schedule, three days a week, which I would later regret, with my last class getting out at 6 p.m. The city I live in is notorious for heavy traffic, and I would not get home until roughly an hour and a half later, despite the university being less than 15 miles away. The sun was mostly down by the time I turned into my street, and there were a few people, some accompanied and one alone, taking their evening stroll. There was nothing remarkable about it. The driveway was occupied, so I parked on the street and made my way home. The following day, I got off my closing shift at 9 p.m. It was dark by the time I got home, and there was a man walking on the strip of sidewalk that faces the condo. I would not have noticed that he was the lone man from the evening before if it was not for him wearing the same outfit, a bright yellow hoodie, black nylon track pants with white pinstripes, gray Nike trainers, and a tan baseball cap. As I got out my car, we shared a quick glance and continued on our way. Two days later, I got off my closing shift and picked my now ex-boyfriend up for a date. 
We went back to the condo so I could change. And in the dark, I saw the man again, wearing the same outfit on the same strip of sidewalk. It's him again. I sounded more surprised and sussed out. And my boyfriend was confused. I explained that I had been seeing him walking around and he was always wearing the same thing. We got out the car and stared at him. Our bodies turned toward him. He ducked behind a car. Now properly sussed out, we got back in my car and watched him get into the into his and drive away with his lights off. At this point, I wasn't sure if the man even lived in the neighborhood. We went about our night and I dropped my boyfriend back at his parents' house. He told me to call him and slash or the police if, he, if I saw that man again. I agreed. I got home around midnight. The man was a street away from his usual spot, crouching below a tree and hugging his knees under his chin. I drove past him and noticed a different man in a blue flannel and jeans approaching the street light. He got under the illuminating glow and pulled out his phone, attempting to make a call. I was unsure if the two men had any association with each other until I looked back over at the yellow hoodie man. He was no longer under the tree. He was also under a street lamp. His back was turned to me, but it appeared as though he was taking a call. I looked back and forth between the two men. It became pretty obvious that they were communicating with each other. I drove away and called the police. They told me to stay where I was or go to another safe location and that they would contact me when the matter was taken care of. I dozed off and was awoken maybe an hour later by the promised phone call. I was told that neither of the two men were residents of the area and they were simply told not to come back on reports of suspicious activity. After being advised to call again if they came back, I went home. I was tired enough that I had no trouble sleeping for a little while. Around 4 a.m. I was sharply roused by a metal screen door rattling against its frame. The force slowly grew in intensity, and eventually the walls and floors were quaking. I peeked through the blinds of my second-story window, which overlooked the front door, and of course saw the man in the yellow hoodie, aggressively attempting to open the screen door. I was shaking my boots on my mattress, which was still on the floor, as I had not purchased a bed frame yet. I received a call from my equally bewildered brother who was in his room, I told him to call my dad while I called the police. It has now almost been four years, and I can assure you that my street smarts have remarkably improved. There's a bunch of people saying, uh, uh, way to leave us on a cliffhanger. Why'd you leave us on a cliffhanger? (laughs) 